This is the fifth video on Introduction to Feedback. In this particular video, we're going to look at how we might quantify the impact of feedback by using some case studies. We're going to assume that students are familiar with how and why feedback is implemented, and this was covered in the first few videos, and that students are able to deal with block diagrams. We're also going to assume that students understand concepts of system gain and offset, and there are some videos on analysis of performance which cover this. Finally, we're going to assume that students understand that the introduction of feedback changes behaviours. This video is going to use some case studies to demonstrate the quantitative impact of feedback on behaviours. So the previous video looked at this qualitatively, now we're going to put some numbers in. So first, just a reminder of why feedback changes behaviours. You'll notice that if you've got open loop, you tend to have a relationship between the target R and the output Y, something like Y equals GN times R. When you close the loop, the relationship becomes something like GM over 1 plus GM, so clearly very different from the open loop transfer function G, and dependent on M. So in other words, feedback results in a different relationship between the target signal R and the process output <coughs> Y. Let's start then with a simple example of tank level. So let's assume we've got a tank of fluid here. We've got some flow out from this tank, which the flow out will depend upon the, um, the size of the hole. And we've also got some flow in. The first thing to do is model the depth of water in this tank. Now there are some videos on modelling and this example is covered there. So we're going to do this very, very briefly and say the model is going to reduce to something like A dh dt, where A is the cross-sectional area, H is the depth, equals the flow in minus the flow out. And the flow out is going to be dependent on the depth through some constant, which here we've written as R rho g. Now, if we combine those two equations together, we get that the depth in the tank is given by this equation here, A dh dt plus R rho g times h equals F in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to assume we've got some simplified numbers, A equals 50 and R rho g equals 1. So if I substitute those into the model, take Laplace transforms, I end up with this model here. The depth, h of s, equals a transfer function, 0.2 over s plus 0.2, times f of s, where f of s is the Laplace transform of the input flow. Now we're going to complicate this by adding some feedback. So we're going to assume that the input flow f in is some constant times the error between the target r and the depth h. Now this is called a proportional feedback law because the flow is proportional to the error in the depth between the target and the actual depth. And what we're going to do is analyse the impact of this feedback. Now in terms of our block diagrams, this is the same as saying M of S equals capital K. So here's some analysis summarised in the table. Here's what you get for open loop on the left, GN equals 0.2 of S plus 0.2. And hopefully by inspection, you can see this has a time constant of 50. That's the inverse of 0.02 and a steady state gain of 1. Though of course in practice that would be uncertain because of uncertainty in the parameters. When we close the loop, we get this, gm over 1 plus gm, and we're going to put values of k such as k equals 1 or k equals 2. So when I put that into the expression, what do you notice? You notice that the time constant is going to become, I'll write it here, t equals 1 over 0 0.02 into 1 plus k. And therefore you'll see with k equals 1 the time constant is 25, with k equals 2 the time constant is 17. What about the steady state gain? Well to get the steady state gain I can essentially cross that s, set it to 0, and you see you get 0.02k over 0.02k plus 0.02. I put in my two values of k, and you see with k equals 1, a steady state gain of a half, k equals 2, a steady state gain of 0.67. So what I seem to be noticing, as I increase k, the time constant is getting faster 
and the gain is getting larger. So what we're going to do now is look at some simulations and see if that's indeed what happens. So we'll jump here. And you'll see here's my uh, example. First of all, we'll do the open loop. Open loop with u equals 1. We'll run the simulation so you can see the tank is filling up because we've set u equal to 1. And you'll see the figure moving as the tank fills up. However, two observations. The target depth here was actually 1.2. And you'll notice the open loop hasn't got to the target depth because we've arbitrarily set u equals 1. And the gains never know exactly. The next thing is the time constant. You can see it's taken about 200 seconds to settle, and that's um, in accord with the expected time constant of about 50. All right, let's add some feedback. So we'll put closed loop. We've got a proportional gain of 1. And now let's run this and see what happens. So you see the tank's filling up as expected. But if you look at the depth in the tank, you'll notice it settles at 0.6, whereas the target is 1.2. And so if I put the error in here, you'll see that this error is in fact 50%, which is what we had in our table. So with this k equals 1, I get an offset of 50%. However, if I look at the time constant, how fast has this system settled, you'll notice it's settled much faster than the open loop. So there's been a speed up, and that, again, is what we saw in our table. Now let's make k equal 2 and see what happens with a proportional gain of 2. <coughs> now you'll see it's getting slightly deeper than before. So the offset is reducing. It's now settling at 0 0.8, so the offset if I draw it down here, is now down to 33%. Okay, A smaller offset because of it increased the proportional gain. And again, you'll see the time constant is even faster. If you look, this system is pretty much settled by about 80 seconds. So the time constant's down to around 20, which again is what we saw in the table. Now, we didn't do it in the table, but just for completeness, let's take the proportional gain a bit higher. We'll take it up to 4 and see what happens now. And you'll see it's responding much faster and the offset is smaller again. OK, so what do we notice? As we increase the gain, the system responds faster and the offset gets smaller. So there's our summary. Changing the feedback gain changes both the time constant and the steady state gain. It did also affect the magnitude of the input, but that's not something we're focusing on in this video. But with purely proportional gain, the closed loop does not deliver the system to the specified target level. There was always an offset. However, the offset was reducing as the gain k increased. Let's look at a different example then, modelling house temperature. Again, these uh, equations are covered in the videos on modelling, so we're given them here very briefly. We're going to use an offset variable for t, so t is defined as the difference between the internal temperature and some external temperature. The rate of change of temperature depends on heat supplied, w in, minus heat lost, w out, and the heat loss depends on the difference between internal and external temperature. If we put those all together, we end up with an equation a bit like this. Now, if I turn that into transfer functions, here's what I get. The temperature, T of S, is 1 over Cs plus K times W in. What I'm going to do next is add my feedback. So I'm going to assume that W in is some constant times the difference between the desired temperature and the actual temperature, Td minus T. So there's my proportional feedback law. If I put those two boxes together, so the system model and the feedback law, and calculate the closed loop transfer function using gm over 1 plus gm, this is what I get. The relationship between the temperature T of S and the desired temperature Td is k, capital K, over Cs plus little k plus big K. And I'm going to give you some particular numbers. We're going to use C here is 400,000, k equals 1,000, and investigate what happens to these behaviours for different values of capital K my proportional feedback. So here's the table. You can see if I'm in open loop, 
the time constant is 4000, steady state gain is 1. If I close the loop and use capital K is 1000, the time constant is faster. It's now 2000. If I use K equals 2000, the time constant is faster again. It's now 1300. Similarly, if I look at the closed loop steady state gains, it's 0 0.5 with K equals 1000 <coughs> and 0 0.67 with K equals 2000. So the steady state gain is getting larger. So again, let's look at some simulations and see if this is indeed what we expect. So here's a simulation. What I've got is I've got a proportional gain of 1000, desired temperature of 20, so we'll run the simulation and see what happens. Now you'll notice the desired temperature is 20, but what temperature have I settled at? I've settled at 15 where the desired temperature is 20. Now for this particular case, we've got an external temperature of 10. So this is actually an offset of 50% because 15 is halfway between 10 and 20. So with proportional gain of 1000, I've settled in about two hours and I've got a 50% offset. What happens then if I change the proportional gain and make it 2000? Let's run again and you'll see the temperature has become hotter. We've got a bit closer to the desired target. We're now up to 16 and 2 thirds or something of that long level. And also, we've settled a bit faster. You'll see the settling time now is between one and two hours. So it's faster than before. So there we go. The simulations have demonstrated what we've seen in this table. A third example, what about cruise control? So the speed of a car can be represented pretty well by a model like this, m dv dt plus bv equals f. So if we put in some numbers, here a mass of 800 and a damping of 200, we can get a transfer function relationship between the force applied and the velocity of the car, 1 over 800s plus 200 times f. Now, if we assume that the maximum available force is going to be 4,000 800 newtons and therefore I'm normalizing this model so that the effective u goes between 0 and 1 so while f could go up to 4800 you'll see I've introduced this variable u um, which goes between 0 and 1 to make life a bit easier then the new transfer function I've got between the speed v and the input u so if I write that here I've got v equals g u then you'll notice the transfer function reduces to this simplified form 24 over 4s plus 1. Now, let's assume that the desired speed is 20 meters per second. Not particularly fast, but fast enough. And we're going to analyze the impact of a proportional control law. So a proportional control law says u equals k times r minus v. r minus v being the error in speed. And we've assumed that the compensator m of s is a constant k. The closed loop transfer function gm over 1 plus gm is therefore going to be this 24k over 4s plus 1 plus 24k. What I want to do is investigate what happens as I change the value of k. So here's some examples. If I put k equals 1, I get 24 over 4s plus 25. So you can see the gain is 24 over 25 and the time constant is 4 over 25. If I put k equals 2, I get 48 over 4s plus 49. So the gain is 48 over 49, and the time constant is 4 over 49. So again, you notice that as we increase k, the time constant gets smaller, i.e. the system gets faster, and the steady state gain gets bigger, it gets closer to 1. And here's the responses to show it. So you'll see we've got small k, goes with the blue and we've got large k goes with the red. So as we increase k you'll see that the system gets faster and you'll see that from the plots it responds and settles faster and also the offset gets smaller. So the target was 20 which is here and you'll see we get closer to the target as we increase the proportional gain. So the observations. Introducing proportional feedback changes the behavior of a process. And we've noticed that the time constant and the gain changes as we change the proportional feedback. We've tended to notice 
that for all our examples the speed of response gets faster as the compensator gain increases, the steady state gain increases as the compensator gain increases, however, and this is critical, there was always a steady state offset. So in conclusion, the behavior of a process is dependent on the feedback rule applied. We change the feedback, we get different behavior. And we've got some insight from this video into the impact of choosing different proportional gains. So conclusions. Proportional feedback changes behavior. We've got some simple insights into the impact of different proportional gains, but we should note this video has only looked at simple first order models and those insights may change for higher order models. The impact can be quantified, so we've used tables and we've used simulations to show that we can see exactly what the impact is. What's the new time constant? What's the new steady state gain? And that means that we've now got some insight into how we might select an appropriate proportional to get the time constant or steady state gain that we need. Finally, a big warning, there was always an offset, which clearly is not desirable, and that's something to be covered later. The next video is going to give more precise quantification of the impact of proportional design so that we can do design a little bit more systematically.